So I was watching a, a video that Alex did um, earlier today, and he basically talked about you know how you know as fans we have to stop this whole you know WWE versus AEW, WWE is better, AEW is better than the other kind of shenanigans. You know that this has to come to an end. That this is getting ridiculous, and he is right. It is, but. I always stick by the fact that when I see people saying, oh, WWE, you know, AEW is better than WWE here, and oh, I hope this person with the contract, you know, is up, they go to AEW and thrive there, and da da da. I always stick by the fact that all it is by these fans that want all this to happen, that say all this, and Alex has even admitted, you know, to an extent that he has contributed you know to that as well and people like JD and others have done that as well the reason and I like I said I stick by what I've said before the reason they do this is because it's rebelling they are rebelling against WWE they're basically in their own rebellious way telling WWE hey you want us to stop doing that then do better you can do better you know you can do better do it and we'll stop rebelling we'll stop saying hope this person goes here and there you know we'll stop doing that and you know that you know that is you know something that you know people have a right to to say and feel like if they want to rebel and say all those kind of things things you know they have the right to do so even if their main motive in my opinion is just to get WWE to, be, to do better then you know that's how then that's what they're gonna do but he also talked about the fact that both have the pros and cons you know, some, you know, one company does right in certain areas while the other company doesn't. And, you know, we shouldn't judge them. We should just accept it and hope they get better in those areas. But when he did this video, it got me thinking about... It got me thinking about one issue that I think AEW can address a lot better than both WWE and even Impact combined. And that is the fact that right now, WWE and Impact do not have legitimately the women's roster they need to justify tag team titles on the main roster that is NXT 2.0 might be the exception because you know they have a lot of ladies in training down there that are trying to get better they're trying to show that they can you know get in with this business and that they can you know you know evolve and learn and all that and thus having the group of ladies they have there justifies them having you know tag team titles uh, the other justification is those tag team titles are not always defended, you know, within a certain time range or always having to be defended on the road, you know, as much as the women's titles or tag titles on the main roster were. So, uh, with that said, you know, to an extent, NXT 2.0 has the justification to have those titles, you know, in the possession over the main roster having tag titles for the ladies because right now the women's roster on the main roster Raw and Smackdown is not justified anymore in having those which is right now why they're kind of like indefinitely shelved like they're still active but basically they're on life support you know until they rebuild that division properly which is why they have you know all those ladies in NXT you know, do you know, focused on and getting ready to be called up on eventually in the future, so that in my opinion, my opinion, by WrestleMania next year or mid 2023, they could potentially try again with those women's tag team titles. But that's up to WWE. And when I look at Impact, you know, obviously you would think, well, they shelved those knockout titles before because the division wasn't that, you know, wasn't that justified to have them and. You know, I could say the same thing right now because, you know, they they had, i put it this way, if you have at least four lady teams, it's justified to have tag titles. It really is, uh, in a sense, because you could have, you know, you could have what, you could have two teams competing for number one contendership over the next shot after the team that comes before them, and then just rotate. It, it makes sense. You know, four teams at the most, I think, can justify for it. But right now, they don't even have... Well, they kind of have that, but not really. Because, you know, they have the influence. You know, they have Savannah Evans and Tasha Steeles. 
and you now they have the team and of course they have the team Rosemary and Taya Valkyrie I don't know what's going on with the rest of the roster like Lady Frost and all that or Jordan Grace I mean Jordan Grace is their champion but you know Lady Frost um, let's see uh, Chelsea Green it, it, you think Chelsea Green and Deanna Perrazzo I think is a team they could put together obviously they're teasing that and also teasing something with Mickey James and Mia Yim being a team. So they have the building blocks there. They do have the building blocks there for a tag team division, or at least a decently sized women's tag team division. But right now, their main focus is just Rosemary, Taya Valkyrie, and maybe the influence again, and that's it. Then I think right now is not the best time to have those tag titles unless the plan, as I mentioned, is to put Chelsea and Deanna together as a team along with you know, Mia Yim and uh, Mickey James being a team then along with like I said the influences of Savannah and Ta Tasha Steeles then that, that's fine you got yourself a decently a decently sized women's division small but decent um, but again if the main focus is just going to be the influence against Rosemary and Ty, Taya, that is, then there's no reason for those tag titles to be around right now. But, if there's any promotion that should have women's tag team titles, it's AEW. Because AEW has the women's division to justify it. I mean... People always talk about that AEW is getting too many tag titles. Well, when you are well, not tag titles, but you're getting too many championships incorporated and introduced. Well, everybody has said that it's just a, everybody has said, and rightfully so, that the justification for that is they have a large roster, which is why they need championships in there to give everybody something to do, or at least thrive for. Which is why they did the AEW All Atlantic Championship. And guess what? That championship is doing exactly what I and others predicted it would. It's a championship that's not just defended in all elite wrestling, but outside of it, in places like Rev Pro in England, possibly New Japan in Japan, AAA in Mexico, you name it. It's being defended all around, not just within AEW like most of their titles are. But when I look at the addition of other titles that should be, you know, should be introduced because it's justified, uh, you know, for its existence to happen, you know, besides, you know, the talk, the most, the much talked about potential trios titles for the men's, I think women's tag team titles would be great. Now, some people might say, oh, that's not possible. There's no way they could do women's tag team titles. They don't, they don't have the women to do it. Like I said, did you not hear me? They have a big roster of not just male ma male wrestlers, but women wrestlers. They have the talent, more so than WWE and Impact combined. They have the talent. As a matter of fact, I'll, let, me, let me look down this, um, let me look down the roster, hold on. Let me, let me look at that roster, okay? And, and I'll let you know. I'll let you know, okay? I'm going to go to Wikipedia. I don't know if they've... Here's the female rest. Okay, get this. So they have, under contract as of right now, the strange but lovable Abaddon, Anna J, AQA, Athena, Britt Baker, The Bunny, Imra, Imra Sakura, Hakaro Ishida, Jade Cargill, Jimmy Hayter, Julia Hart, Kira Hogan, Chris Dantlander, Leva... Liva Bates, eight. Leah Hirsch, who's in on injury right now, but you know they have a Mercedes Martinez, the Ring of Honor Women's Champion. Nyla Rose, Paige Van Z Van Zant, Penelope Ford, Rebel, or Reba or Rebel. Red Velvet, Riho, Ruby Soho, Serena Deeb, Ty Conte, Thunder Rosa. Tony Storm and Yuka Sakura. You know, they have all these ladies. They have all these ladies that you can't tell me right now 
would not justify, you know, women's tag team titles because they would. They would definitely justify AEW adding in women's tag team titles. And that is a fact. You know it. I know it. Anybody else watching this tonight or today knows it. They can justify having tag team titles. And, and you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? They have more on the potential, you know, you know, potential rise. They have more women potentially being signed in or sign, you know, signed in to be all elite. You know, they have potential women coming in from other promotions internationally, you know, nationally. You know, they have all, they have more coming. And this roster I just read off of you, read off for of you, to me, you know, it's the perfect example and the perfect case to justify the introduction of women's tag team titles. It does. I mean, the men got a bigger roster, which would justify six-man tag team titles. And that's true. That That is indeed true. But again, the women, the women have a big enough roster. This roster, I hate to say this, is bigger than both WWE's women's main main roster the WWE's main roster women's division and Impact's main roster division is in for the women. It's bigger than both of those. So to me, WWE, not WWE, but AEW has more justified reason to introduce tag team titles for the ladies alongside trios titles for the men. They do. So if there's anything that AEW can do better and everybody overall, whether the WWE, you know, for life or AEW for life, or they enjoy wrestling overall, will agree upon that AEW is justified in doing and doing better because they have the women's roster for it. It is basically creating and introducing AEW women's world tag team titles. And they know it. They know it. And because think about it this way, we know, as I've talked about before, we know, and I mentioned this to Alex in a uh, in a chat, I believe. I think it was a super chat or a chat. I mentioned it to Alex. I said that Thunder Rosa is going to drop this title to Jade. So that opens up Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm, who are teasing me in a team right now. You know, that opens up Thunderstorm, as they call themselves. To go after to, to be go after potential tag team titles. I mean, in 2020 during the pandemic, what did they do? What did they do to justify having the women, all those women on the roster at that time? Most of them that are still here. What did they do? They had a women's tag team cup tournament. Right then and there, should have told you what Tony Khan was doing is he was testing the waters. He was testing the waters to see if there was reason enough for women's tag team championships. But he didn't do it. All he did was present Demonte and Ivelisse before the issue of Ivelisse, you know, occurred with a with a trophy, and that's it. You know what would have been better for them to do? Do exactly what they did for Adam Cole and Britt Baker when they both won the respective Owen Hart tournaments. That's give them championship belts, and not just championship belts. Saying, "Okay, you're the 2020 Women's Tag Team Cup winners. Here's your championship belts for the year." No. What they should have done in 2020, because they had the roster then and they knew they was building, it was going to get bigger, is they should have introduced right then and there women's tag team titles. But they didn't do it. They didn't. And that was a mistake. But now, now's the time. Now, Tony Khan, Tony Khan, if you're watching this, my friend, now is the time for you to really sit back and look at this roster and be like, you know what? Along with the trios titles that I'm considering bringing in for the men, I'm going to bring in some women's tag team titles for the ladies. And you know what will happen? Not only will you have a lot of those women on that roster happy at the fact that they have another championship to compete for, but it gives all the ladies right now something to do, not just individually, but as a team. And you already got it set up, like I said, Thunder Rosa, Tony Storm, you got the baddies, you know, you got, uh, what is it, you got uh, Ruby Soho and... Anna J maybe you know 
you got you know Penelope Ford and the Bunny. I mean, the list goes on. The like I said, Kira, you know Kira Hogan and Red Velvet when Red Velvet comes back from an injury, or right now Kira Hogan and Le Leia Hirsch. I mean, or when Leia gets back from injury, you get the idea. You have you have the roster. You have the potential for a lot of teams. I mean, Riho and Yukura, that that's a team right there internationally. How about Akaru Shida and Riho, Akaru Shida and Imura Sakura? I mean, come on. The combinations, the combinations here speak for themselves uh, of teams you could put together. Britt Baker's team of her, Rebel, and Jamie Hayter, free bird rule right there. Same with the baddies. Okay? And like I say, you got Akara Shida and Ida, you got Chris Stantlander, you got, you know, Athena. Who else did they bring in? Uh, you got AQA. Again, it's Mercedes Martinez. I mean, the, the list can go on and on and on. Folks, if it's anything we can all agree on that AEW could do better, whether we support WWE or AEW, or if we just love both in general as overall wrestling fans, hardcore or casual, it's the fact that they have the justification to do you know, a women's tag team championship division right, because they have the roster. They have the roster. I mean, Nyla Rose, you know, you put her with somebody, like Abaddon maybe, shoot, okay, you have the roster. And all you, have, all you have to do, all you have to do is pull the trigger. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. And that's it. That is it. But to me, I think AW, if there's one pro that they have that they could, if there's one con that they could turn into a pro, I should say, a, you know, for the future. And that is basically taking that women's division and the con that you only have two singles titles, three singles titles, if you count the women's the R R O H Women's World Championship, the the con that you could take from that women's division, but only having three singles titles, is create and turn it into a major pro, a major positive pro. Everybody would get behind. That is creating women's tag team titles, and you know it. So Tony Khan, if I'm you, I would strongly consider alongside the consideration of men's trios titles to also consider creating and introducing women's tag team titles because you have the roster on both ends both men and women to justify both existence for those titles you know both championships that is so if i was you in consideration of the trios titles i would consider women's tag team titles i would do that because if there's anything that AEW and everybody will agree upon this. Whether you support WWE more so than AEW, or whether you support AEW more so than WWE, or like I said, overall you support both. I think if there's one thing we can agree upon, that AEW will do is justified in doing better than WWE and even Impact combined. And that, it, and that being, creating and introducing women's tag team titles. And I think we all know that to be true. But let me know what your thoughts are, guys. Comment below, live chat during the premiere, like the video, super thanks will be enabled after the premiere, super chats and super stickers will be enabled as always in the live chat during the premiere. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think AEW, along with consideration of eventually introducing men's trio titles, should also consider introducing women's world tag team titles? Let me know down below. Oh, as well as in the live chat during the premiere, and I will talk to y'all later.